Court, Geelong, June 4th, 1842. Sir, I have to state to you the particulars of an affray which took place last Tuesday night, the 31st incident, the particulars of which are as follows. On the evening above mentioned, two parties of Aborigines encountered each other within a mile and a half of my station, part of the Barrable Hill natives and part of the Mount Rouse tribe, who immediately gave battle, but were defeated with the loss of three men and two unfortunate young females. On the Wednesday morning, the few natives immediately belonging to my neighborhood arrived bearing this intelligence, evidently in a great state of excitement and dreadfully afraid to return to their encampment without the protection of myself and servants, who were to be well armed. Directly after breakfast, I started accompanied by the first natives to within a short distance of their huts, where they all remained, and I proceeded forward by myself, and on reaching the spot found their report to be perfectly correct. Such disgusting scene can scarcely be imagined. The whole encampment deluged with blood, First lay the body of a middle-aged man named Kodjaja, speared through the breast in many places, his bowels taken off them, and a few pieces cut out of his thigh. The next body was that of a woman speared in many places, quite dead. A short distance from her stood a young lubra, with two spears through the belly, the whole of her intestines hanging to the ground. She was perfectly sensible, it would have been a charity to have shot her then but she departed this life in the evening. Besides these three, within a short distance of the huts, lay the body of two more men, known by the names of Jim and Big One Tom. They were partly eaten, the fat being taken by their Christian brethren. These are civilized Aborigines who have been well instructed by our assistant protectors and certainly have profited no little by the time and expense that have been lavished upon them. Such are the particulars of this affair, by the insertion of which you will oblige. Yours sincerely, John Davenport Bromfield.